Good morning, sir. Good morning. Uh, uh, I just missed it. I just shared that, uh, uh, that ID and password in some other group, actually. I just forget. Huh? Just, uh, that's what I just posted it now. Uh, you have a sheet of paper, pen and skill. Actually, I wanted graph sheets today. Everything, I just uh, put it in some other group by mistake. It's not an issue. So have a sheet of paper and a pen and a scale. So we have to, uh, I'll, I will teach one uh, problem, which we are going to solve it on a graphical web. Okay. So afterwards you can transfer it into your graph sheet later on. Okay. So I think in the last class, uh, I was just discussing uh, uh, the definition of global and mini global and uh, uh, local minima. So in that respect, I just started with uh, uh, two important things. One is the feasible set, and the one is an active, inactive, and violated set. So in today's class, uh, let us uh, define the terms. Uh, what is global or absolute minimum and local minimum? And the later part, uh, I will explain one problem. How to solve the problem uh, uh, to determine both local as well as local minimum for both the uh, unconstrained and unconstrained uh, problems. Uh, using a graphical map. Okay, graphical solution is also there in your uh, syllabus. So I will teach one problem on how to do that. If you could able to get uh, the graph sheets, which is within uh, two or three minutes, you better well and good. If not, uh, not an issue. Please have a pen, scale, and sheet of paper. So just learn how to just learn the procedure how to solve that problem graphically. Okay. So we were talking about the optimality conditions and. Uh, <coughs> The optimality criteria in the previous classes. So when we say an optimality criteria, the optimality conditions should be satisfied at the minimum point. So the minimum means there are two types of minimum. One is called global minimum and second one is called local minimum. Okay. So what are those local and global minimum we will go to discuss. Uh, first we are going to discuss what is a global minimum. A function f of x of n variables has a global minimum at x star if the value of the function at x star is less than or equal to the value of the function at any other point x in the feasible set S. So means if you say a function which is uh, having in n variables, okay, so we will talk about single variable, two variables. So if a function is having an n variables and it has a, a global minimum at x star. When we say a function of n variable is having a global minimum at x star, if the function of or function, if that function at x star is less than or equal to the value of the function at any other point x in the feasible set. So in the sense, so the function is having, we will say, having a global minimum at x star. So we will say the x star is a feasible point or a point where if the value of the function at x star is less than or equal to the value of the function at any other point in the feasible set S. So mathematically, we will go to represent this f of x star is less than or equal to f of x. So if this condition will satisfy, then that function will have a minimum at x star. So this is the one important definition we should propose to do. So in the sense, the a function of n variable has a global minimum at x star. If the value of the function at x star, just imagine, so when you just we solve the problem, you will understand how this thing. So if x star is less than or equal to the value of any function at any other point x in the feasible set. So this is a mathematical expression you are supposed to remember for all x in the feasible set S, if strict inequality holds good for all x other than x star in the whole equation, then x star is called strong or strict global minimum. Otherwise, it is called a V or a global minimum. So this is the definition of a global or absolute minimum. So one thing you have to remember, please make a note of this, f of x star should be less than or equal to f of x. So this is the condition that needs to be satisfied for having a global minimum or a function will have a global minimum at x star if the value of that function should be 
less than or equal to the value of a function at any other point in the physical set. This is what we call it as the global minimum. Okay. Similarly, we have another one minimum, what we call it as the local minimum. So the local minimum is a function f of x of n variables as a local or relative minimum at x star. If inequality in the above equation holds for all x in the soft, small neighborhood n or in the vicinity of x star in the feasible set s. If strict inequality holds, then x star is called a strong local minimum, otherwise it is called a weak local minimum. It is Surely these statements are uh, mathematical oriented. Okay. So therefore, <clears throat> so please try to understand uh, it in a, a mathematical forms only. That is always been better for us. Okay. So when do we say a minimum or a function is having a local minimum or a function of n variables has a local minimum at x star? If please understand this, if the inequality in the above equation holds for all x in the small neighborhood n of x star in the feasible set S. So if a strict inequality holds, then x star is called a strong local minimum or strict local minimum. Otherwise, it is called a weak local minimum. So this is what they say. So, so this is say the neighborhood n of x star is defined as a set of points. So we are talking about neighborhood n of x star. So this is the mathematical expression for neighborhood of n. I think you can easily understand what is this mathematical statement. For small, some small delta greater, greater than zero, geometrically it is a small feasible region around a point. Surely it is a mathematical statements what we are doing. So now let us understand this. Of course, before uh, we go for a graphical uh, understanding of uh, local and global minima. Please let us have certain points to be noted. What are those points is, note that a function f of x can have a strict global minimum at only one point. Strict global minimum can possible only at one point. It may have a global minimum at several points if it has the same value at each of those points. So please understand this notes a function f of x can have a strict global minimum at only one point second one however it may have a global minimum at several points if it has the same value at each of those points this is a very important okay similarly a function f of x can have a strict local minimum at only one point in the neighborhood n of x star and however it can have a several points in n if the function value is same at the same of those points. So this is the four important uh, notes that needs to be remembered. Okay, strict global and strict local can have only one point, cannot have, but so it can have a number of global at several points and local at several points if, if it has the same value at each of those points. So these are the things what is supposed to be Remember before we proceed for solving the problems. Okay. Let us understand <clears throat> the graphical significance of global and local minima. Consider the graphs of function f of x of one variable as shown in the figure. Below. Consider the graphs of the function f of x of one variable. So we have uh, two different graphs, A and B. So what the slide it is showing at present, it is the figure A. Okay. So to understand how, uh, uh, what is the significance of global and local minimums under a graphical point of view. So we have taken a function f of x of one variable, okay, and uh, we have plotted to different points to represent, uh, to understand what is the local minima and global minima, right. So in the part A, so that is in the diagram what you are looking at here. It is a graph unbounded domain and function, unbounded, so it is no boundary for us. So the values that f of x and x can have any values, 
any values, no boundary, it is an unbounded domain. So x is also unbounded, whereas f of x is also unbounded. Okay. So this is a what graph what it is showing. In a part A of the figure, where x is between minus infinity to plus infinity. So please understand. So the value of x, so you can assign a value of x which can vary from minus infinity to plus infinity. So in such case, the points B and B, what we are showing here, look at here, the point B and point D. So these two points are local minima since the function has its smallest value in their neighborhood. Okay, so f of x, if you say x value, so x value can have any value between infinity, minus infinity, and plus infinity. Okay, so here the function, the b and d, the points b and d, what we are looking at here, we consider them as a local minimum since. The function f of x has its smallest value in their neighborhood. So because it both are showing the negative values here, so we can have f of x and have the minimum value at this point as the smallest value in their neighborhood. And hence, these two values, b and d, will be considered as the local minimum. Similarly, a and c, these two points, what you are seeing here, these two points are local maximum for the function. Please understand this. So, this is a graph plotted between x and a function f of x. So, this is an unbounded domain. Both the domain and the function are unbounded here. So, in that respect, we have representing the values of the local minimum and local maximum. So, so there are, there is however no global minimum for maximum for the function. So in this case, there is no global minimum or maximum. The reason is, since the domain and the function f of x are unbounded, when you have an unbounded, both the domain and the function, then there is no possibility of getting global minima or global maximum. Of course, you can have a local minima and local maximum. So this will be in the neighborhood of x bar. Okay. So, but when you want to have a global minima or global maximum, so both the domain and the function should be bounded. Means it should have a, some finite numbers. So then only we can say it is a global. So when the both the domain and the functions are unbounded, then then such kind of problems does not have any kind of a global minima or global maximum. So therefore, <clears throat> what you can see. Since the domain and the function f of x are unbounded, that is, x and f of x are allowed to have any value between minus infinity and plus infinity. So, in the sense, in this case, you can have any value between minus infinity to plus infinity. In such cases, there will be no existence of global maxima and global minima. So, this is the what the graph what it is going to. And finally, what you can conclude is so the existence of global minima or global maxima, both the domain and the function should be a bounded one. In the sense, the values of both x and of x should have a finite value. So then only we can have a global minima or global maxima. However, if it is unbounded, you can get a local minima and local maxima. This is what the Final conclusion from this graphical representation. Let's move to the second part B here. The bounded domain and the function. So this is what we are showing here. The bounded domain and the function. If so, in the previous uh, graph, what we are showing here, if we restrict the x to lie between minus a and plus b, so you can see in the graph here. So in the previous graph. So you are having there is no limits for there is no boundary for the value of x. But in this case, so when you look at here, the value of x has been constrained or it has been restricted to lie between minus a minus a to plus b. 
so it is being bounded. The boundary of the value of x or domain has been fixed. So where you are restricting the x to lie between minus a and plus b, what we are showing in the figure. Then in such cases, the point E is the global minima point. So what we are showing here, the point E will represent the global minima, whereas point F is the global maximum of the function. Okay, so look at these two values. The points E and F both will represent the global minima. Point E represents the global minima, whereas point F represents global maxima. And these two points are active constraints. In the last class, we are talking about what is an active constraint and inactive constraint. And both E and F are active constraints over here. And E is called a global minima, whereas F is called a global maxima. And of course, point A, B, C, G are unconstrained. They don't have any values. If they are not constrained there, they can have any value. Okay. So this is uh, the graph. What it is showing, it is for a bounded domain and a function. So when the function and the domains are restricted, or it can, it is supposed to, it is allowed to have a finite number of constraints, then we can determine where is the global minima and which is the global the one thing what is supposed to understand. A global minimum point is the one where there are no other feasible points with better cost function value. Okay, a global minimum point is the one where there are no other feasible points with better cost function values. So the local minimum when you say or global minimum point when you say so that is the point where there is no other feasible points with a better cost function value. So there is only a single point, global minimum point, and it does not does not contain any other feasible points with a better cost function. So that is the one important thing. And local minimum point is the one where there are no other feasible points in the vicinity with a better cost function value. So vicinity means within the neighborhood of that point, we should not have any feasible points which better cost function than such type of uh, points we call it as a local minimum. So this is how you can graphically understand the significance of both local as well as global. Okay, so this is the definition and the important things. So <clears throat> So any clarifications from anybody, anyone side? So these definitions, because uh, uh, this is a very simple and a very important statements, definitions for local and global minima. And uh, next, I will take you for uh, one simple problem. So for that, I need you people to have uh, uh, pencil scale and a graph, graph sheet if possible. Otherwise, you can have a plain sheet of paper and later you can transfer it into the Plane and graph sheet. So, if you could able to get a graph sheet, so please you can have a graph sheet and we can solve it. So, you can unmute yourself and uh, we can have a discussion and simultaneously you can draw. Yeah. Sundesh, do you have graph sheets with you? No, sir. No, okay, not an issue. Uh, at least plain sheet of paper and a scale. Yes, sir, and a sir. Pencil and scale, pencil and scale. So, so you can just uh, use this plane sheet and later words you can uh, you can transfer it into the graph sheet. I need you to do that. So remaining students, they can unmute yourself and uh, I will be keep on explaining how to do this graphically and uh, simultaneously you can start doing it on your uh, plane sheet of paper and if possible, uh, do it on a graph sheet if it is possible. Okay. So we'll be starting now. So please make a note of this problem statement. This the once it has been asked for 10 marks in your exam. Okay. So please make a note of this problem statement and how to do the solution also. Okay. Yeah. Please make a note of this problem statement. So this is the problem, example problem. This is the use of definition of minimum point, constraint minimum of our constraint problem. 
an optimum design problem is formulated and transcribed into the standard form in terms of the variable x and z. This is not right. So you can start from the minimize. Minimize. Please make a note of this problem statement. Minimize f of x comma y. Minimize f of x comma y, which is equal to. Minimize f of x comma y, which is equal to x minus four whole square plus y minus six whole square. The problem statement is like this: Minimize f of x comma y, close to the close within the bracket, which is equal to X minus y whole square plus y minus six whole square. So this is a function. And next comes to the constraints subject to subject to. So please make a note of that. Uh, these constraints one by one. G one small g one is equal to x plus y. Small g one first constraint g one is equal to x plus y minus twelve minus twelve less than or equal to zero. That is the first constraint. Second constraint g two small g two which is equal to x minus eight. X minus a less than or equal to zero. Next comes G three, G three minus x minus x less than or equal to zero. Minus x less than or equal to zero. Or within the bracket, we take x is greater than or equal to zero. Minus x is less than or equal to zero. Or within the bracket, x is greater than or equal to zero. And the fourth constraint is g4 is equal to minus four and minus five and minus y minus five less than or equal to zero. Minus y. Less than or equal to zero within the bracket. Y is greater than or equal to zero. Both are one the same. Anything you can take. So these are the four constraints they have given for the function f of x comma y is equal to x minus four whole square plus y minus six whole square. So this is a function and subjected to the constraints. Now what we supposed to do for this problem is find the local and global minima for the function f of x comma. Find. The local and global minima. Find the local and global minima for the function f of x comma y using using the graphical method. Using graphical method. So this is a problem which is asked for ten uh, marks in your examination. So for this, we had to solve it on a graph sheet, basically. Okay. So even in the exam also, you have to solve it on a graph sheet. So actually, I posted wrongly in a different group yesterday. I thought it's people uh, might have get ready with a graph sheet. Not an issue. So today you can have a plain sheet of paper and uh, you can uh, uh, just try this and uh, just later words you can uh, transfer it into the graph sheet. Okay. So let us start now. So the solution I will go to explain within a step by step procedure. So please follow that and simultaneously please try to do it on a plain sheet of paper. Okay. Yeah, the step by step graphical solution procedure. So first is coordinate system setup. So any graphical solution which involves uh, the setting up a coordinate system. Okay. So of course. The first step in the solution process is to set up an uh, origin for the x y coordinate system and scales along the x and y axis. 
by looking at the constraint functions a coordinate system for the minimization problem can be set up along both x and y axes in some cases the scale may be need to be adjusted after the problem has been graphed because the original scale may provide too small or too large graph for the so just like uh, how we used to do how we used to just set up uh, the coordinate system or coordinate uh, axis is both x and y for us of course you can have a scale if it is too large uh, for the x and y coordinates so looking at the constraint function see when you are uh, setting a coordinate system look at the constraint function the co by looking at the constraint function a coordinate system for the minimization problem can be set up along with both and x axis see what is the coordinate function for us it is x plus y minus 12 and x minus 8 so maximum value it is 12 over here okay x plus y minus 12 so you can set your graph shape coordinate axis for at 12 of both x and y axis so this is the one what you supposed to means maximum value what you will going to get about x and y axis will be 12 so you have to plan in that way so when you want to setting the coordinate axis or coordinate system look at the constraint function for the problem minimization problem and you can just set up the coordinates along both x and y axis okay so what i have done so like this you can do So you do one thing. So how we can do here is in the step two. I will, I will, we, will, we can do later. In the step two, inequality constraint boundary plot to illustrate the graphing of a constraint. Let us consider the inequality x plus y minus one is less than or equal to zero as in the equation A. To represent the constraint graphically, we first need to plot the constraint boundary. that is the points that satisfies the constraint constraints as an as an equality x plus y is equal to 12 this is a similar this is a linear function of variables x1 and x2 to plot such function we need to we need two points that satisfy the equation x plus y is equal to 12 let these points be calculated as a 12 0 and 0 12 locating them on a graph and joining them by the straight line produces the Line BM. The line BM then represents the boundary of the feasible region for the inequality constant x plus one less than or equal to one. Points on one side of this line violate the constraint, while those on the other side satisfy. So this is how we can do. see what you do. So you can start from this side. X you measure till uh, mark it as it is. We are going to start from minus two here. This zero. This is not zero. This point is minus two, minus two. Okay. So just mark it zero, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Like that, you can go up to maximum sixteen. You can go up to sixteen. You can go. And similarly on the y-axis also. So you can mark from. Don't take this as zero. This is minus two. This origin we will take it as a minus two. Zero, two, four. Like this, you can go up to sixteen. You can go. So mark like this. So if you have any clarification, you can do just have a rough sketch upward. You can transfer it into the graph sheet also. So first mark like this x and y axes, and we have an x plus y is equal to twelve. So therefore we have got zero twelve and twelve zero. So like that, from twelve to twelve, you must draw a line, thick line. i think by mistake it is written e it should be m it is it is b this point is b and this point is m later part i will show that it is an m by mistake it is shown it as e are the following students if in clarification you can talk to me you can uh, stop me at any point x axis each box you make it as 0 2 4 6 like this you mark on x axis along also y axis okay 
so as we told in the second step so to represent the constraint graphically first we need to plot the constraint boundary that is the points that satisfy the constraints as an equality x plus y is equal to 1 so when x plus y can be equally equal to when x is equal to 0 then y should be equal to 1 then only it will be satisfied or when y is equal to 0 x should be equal to 1 so then only this equality constraint will be satisfied so therefore this is a linear function of the variables x and x2 to so plot such function we need two points that have satisfy the equation two points are x and y if the value of maximum value of x can be 12 then the minimum value of y should be 0 then only you going to get x plus y is equal to 12 or if the maximum value of y is 12 then the minimum value of x should be 0 so therefore 12 comma 0 and 0 comma 12 locating them on the graph and joining by the straight line produces the line bm which should be bm as shown in the figure the line bm that represents the boundary of the feasible region for the inequality constant x plus y less than or equal to 1 points on one side of this line violate the constant while those on the other side will satisfy okay so now first to graph draw like this from 12 to 12 so here it is 0 12 and here it is 12 0 12 so those two points to draw join from 12 to 12 with a tick line so this is point m sorry this is the wrong bit has been shown it is point m this is b so this is the line which represents x plus y is equal to 1 when we able to get it any clarification please make a note yes sir okay this is the first thing where you are going to draw the boundaries for this next comes the identification of the feasible region for an inequality the next step is to determine which side of the constraint boundary bm is feasible for the constraint x plus y less than or equal to 12 to accomplish this we select a point on either side of bm and evaluate the constraint function there for example at point 00 the left side of the constraint has a value of 0 because the value is less than Well, the constraint is satisfied in the region. So, and the, in the region below is feasible. We can test the constraint at other point on the opposite side of BM set in point M. So, like this, what we are doing is so. This is the next part of this. The same graph I have shown in a different unit. So, this is the first part what you have done. Then the later part, later part of the graph is like this. So, what we have done, same thing here. So, you can see. the green line what i have shown here it is a b here this is b 0 12 12 and m is 12, 0 so this is what we have drawn till now okay so now so the shaded forms what i have shown the shaded lines they all consider to be an infeasible regions infeasible regions so how do we going to get the the the, the constraint which falls which satisfies x plus y less than 12 so the constraint is x plus y minus 12 should be less than or equal to 0 or x plus y should be less than or equal to 12 let's see you can put it not a machine for this so if the x plus y is equal to 12 is the line b am i right so if x plus y if any point if you satisfy satisfy this constraint x plus y is less than 12 then that will falls in the feasible region see the area just below this line bm we call it as a feasible region the line which is above above the line bm we call it as an infeasible region means what i am talking here is so if you put any value for x plus y if you put or if you substitute any value for x plus y so the sum of x plus y should come less than 12 then those points of x y will fall in the feasible region so that will satisfy the constraint for us the constraint is x plus y should be less than or equal to 0 sum of x and y values should be always less than or equal to 0 that is the constraint for us. so equality constraint is x plus y is equal to 1 so this is the line 
Vm is the line which stays the equality constraint. Okay, then x plus y less than 12 represents inequality. There is a feasible region, and x plus y greater than 12, which will false an infeasible region because x plus y greater than 12 is violates the constraints force. It does not satisfy the constraints, and hence any point which will form x plus y greater than 12, then that will fall under the infeasible region. So this is the one thing what is supposed to remember. And later part, unconstrained points. To locate the minimum points, we use the definition of local minimum and check the inequality. F of x star, y star is f of x y. And at the candidate feasible point in its small feasible neighborhood, Note that the cost function always has a non-negative value at any point with the smallest value as zero at the center of the circle. Since the center of the circle is at E, 4, 6 is feasible, it is a local minimum point with a cost function value of zero. So when you look at the function here, this f of x of y is equal to x minus 4 whole square plus y minus 6 whole square. This is the equation of a circle. Equation of a circle. So when you put the value of x is equal to 4 and y is equal to 4, then f of x will become 0. So then the center of the circle will be 4 and 6. 4 and 6. So 4 and 6. So when you substitute 4 and 6, so in this equation, if the value of x is equal to 4 and y is equal to 6, this is satisfied less than 12. So it will fall under on the key. Okay, and another one important thing what we have to remember here is the, the constraint functions here it is 8. Another one 8 is there. So from that what you can do is see here from 8 so you can draw a line till 4 on the x on the y coordinate 4 and x coordinate 8. So from there you can draw the feasible regions. So you can close it. So draw the this and you can close it here. So see, this is what I have shown 8 to 4. Okay, so this entire region we call it as a feasible region. Okay, so here, since the center of the circle at E4, 6 is feasible, it is a local minimum point with the cost function 0. Okay. Then, for constraint points, we check the local minimum condition at some other point as follows. If you put a comma a is equal to 0, 0, f will become 52. So, if you substitute the value of a, x as 0 and y as 0, then function x minus 4 whole square plus y minus 6 whole square will become 52. It is not a local minimum point since the inequality is violated for any small feasible move away from the point A. That is, the cost function reduces as you move away from the point A. And similarly, if you put 4, 0, this will become 36. It is also not a local minimum point. So therefore, finally, you can say it can be checked that at the points B, C, D, and G are also not local minimum point. In fact, there is no other local minimum point.